to those of you who are here in church and those of you watching online, good morning. In today's gospel, Jesus shows great compassion for the people gathered to hear him teach and performs his famous miracle of feeding the thousands of people. And the people wonder at who Jesus is after seeing the sign he had done. We should look for the little signs that Jesus does for us every day. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Isaiah Mary, and the preacher is Father Andrew Thomas. Let us begin our Mass this morning by singing together. Numbers are in the front on either side, as usual. Number 310, Gather Your People. The G915 is the glory to God in the back of the book. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today, dear friends, in our Gospels, in our readings, we contemplate the Lord Jesus, his, his divine generosity to us, his people, gathering us certainly around his table of plenty so that we can find our healing, our flourishing, and our peace coming to celebrate these beautiful mysteries of our redemption, let us quiet our hearts and minds, repent of our sins, so as to prepare to receive the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us a life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace on earth, peace to people on goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God and the King. Glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Lord 
Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated on the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. to God in the highest and on earth peace on earth peace to people of good will Amen Amen Let us pray O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has from, da from foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow an abundance of mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and our guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Balshalisha, Baal bringing to Elijah, the man of God, twenty barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elijah said, Give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, How can I set this before a hundred people? Elijah insisted, Give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat, and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over, as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. The hand of the Lord feeds us, He answers all our needs, He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us, He answers all our needs, He answers all our needs. All your works shall thank you, O Lord, 
And all your faithful ones bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your mighty deeds. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look to you. And you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and all satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just all His ways, and holy in all His deeds. The Lord is close to all who call Him, who call on Him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. He answers all our needs. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all in, in one. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You will eat and have some left over. When the servant of the prophet Elisha, in today's first reading, panicked over the lack of food, asking, how can I set 20 barley loaves before a hundred people? The prophet Elisha assured him with those simple words. You will eat and have some left over. There was no explanation of how it would happen, no backup plan, no attempt at fundraising to have enough food, just the assertion founded on an absolute confidence on the providence and the generosity of God. You will eat, that is, God will provide for what you need, and have some left over, meaning, and he will give generously in abundance. So from 20 barley loaves, 100 were fed. Now, that was from the Old Testament. If we look at the gospel for today, we can see how Jesus' miracle of the multiplication of the loaves is both similar to and actually very different from Elisha's miracle from the first reading. So the similar points. There were a lot of people. There was not a lot of food. But everyone ate, and there was food left over. So far, they're pretty similar. But the difference is actually enormous between these two stories once we look at the details. So, if you don't mind, let's do some math. Elisha had 20 barley loaves, with which he miraculously fed 100 people, with some left over. Our Lord Jesus took five barley loaves, with two fish, of course, and miraculously fed 5,000 with 12 full baskets 
left over. This sort of sounds like a word problem from elementary school. I apologize. Elisha's miracle was feeding, if we do the ratio, about five people per loaf. Not bad, prophet Elijah. But Jesus' miracle was feeding a thousand per loaf of bread. And the text specifically says that they couldn't eat anymore. So from five per loaf of bread to a thousand. So if the miracle of Elisha was a lesson in trusting that God does indeed see and provide for the needs that we have, the miracle of our Lord says something more. Here, with Jesus, God's generosity is excessive, almost ridiculous, super abundant. He gives not only what we need, but so much more than we deserve, even more than we could ask for. These two miracles correspond to two ways that God is provident to us, two ways that God shows us his generosity. So Elisha's story, if we start with that one, corresponds to our necessities. The food that we eat, the clothes that we wear, even the ground we stand on, the air we breathe, the light that touches our eyes, everything, all of it, is a gift of God, a gift for you. One of many subtle signs of the providence of love of God. If I can push it further, even your very existence, the fact that you are here right now is a sign of his love. It's a gift. Because without God's love for you, you couldn't exist. His love is the very ground of your being. So by extension, if I quote a little bit St. Therese of Azur, All is gift. All is love. But the crazy thing is, that's just the beginning. It doesn't stop here. So all the things that I just mentioned, these are things that we can call God's natural gifts or the gifts of nature, whatever you want to say. And they're the gifts that correspond to, like I said, what we need to live as creatures, to our nature as human beings. But God gives us even greater gifts than these. Gifts we can call gifts of grace, which don't just sustain our lives, but give us a share in his life, in eternal life, in divine life. They give us a higher kind of life, and it's a gift that we can never deserve, a gift we couldn't even imagine, that we don't even have the words to know how to ask for them. And he does this, he gives these gifts with an almost insane, excessive generosity. We see this, for example, in our own redemption. To redeem us from our sins, Jesus poured out his blood. He poured out his whole life, right? But in St. Thomas Aquinas' famous hymn called the Adorote Devote, or maybe the Godhead Here in Hiding is usually the translated title. St. Thomas sings of Christ's blood with these words. Blood that but one drop of has the power to win all the world forgiveness of its world of sin. Just one drop of Christ's blood would have sufficed, would have been enough, would have been worth the salvation of the whole world, and yet he chose to pour it all out just to show us what he thought we were worth. He gave himself in an unspeakable excess as a demonstration of his infinite and unmerited love. Similarly, kind of like he did with the 5,000. Our Lord feeds us, but he gives us his own flesh to eat. With a miracle even greater than the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, 
Christ feeds us spiritually by giving us the most holy Eucharist, the bread of life, the true bread from heaven. And the thing is, we can never understand, we can never actually imagine what the gift of the Eucharist truly is. In the Our Father, we pray the words, Give us this day our daily bread, asking for just our sustenance, our basic needs, enough to get by until tomorrow. But hearing this and responding to it, Jesus gives us instead his body, his blood, his soul, his divinity in the Eucharist. And this is a gift more precious than the entire world, the entire universe combined, and infinitely more. If, for example, all the money in the world, every precious gem and stone, even every smallest last bit of gold and silver that we can find rummaging around the earth, if all this was gathered and put in an embarrassingly large heap of riches, and then that, all of that was offered as an exchange for the most holy Eucharist, it would be a really bad deal. It would be a laughable deal. There really is no comparison. All of that stuff, fine, gold, silver, whatever, I don't care, etc. All of it is just passing, material, shallow. But here, in the most holy Eucharist, is the creator of all that exists, the divine source of all beauty, the infinite and supreme goodness. The Eucharist is worth everything and more, and he gives it to you. Don't let the fact that the gift is given weekly or even daily, that it's so available to you, don't let that change a thing. Don't let the unceasing generosity of God make you value this gift any less. Here, in the gifts of grace in general, but especially in the greatest gift of the Eucharist, you have everything. So let me share, to conclude, some words from St. John of the Cross. Sorry, John of the Cross. They come from his sayings of light and love. And he writes, Mine are the heavens, and mine is the earth. The angels are mine, and the mother of God, and all things are mine. And God himself is mine and for me, because Christ is mine and all for me. What do you ask then and seek, my soul? Yours is all of this, and all is for you. Do not engage yourself in something less, or pay heed to the crumbs that fall from your Father's table. End quote. How beautifully St. John of the Cross speaks of this immense generosity of God. My brother, my sister, beloved Christian soul, do you not see? Everything is yours. Everything is yours because Christ is yours. So why do we look jealously at one another? Why do we compare ourselves to one another? Why do we complain or cheat or fight when everything, everything is ours? If you have Christ, you have everything. So let the rest go and learn to see and appreciate the unspeakable generosity of God.
responding to the Lord's generosity and fidelity, we respond as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, who was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. The Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, seats in the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Come, amen. God, our provident Father, he feeds us and blesses us. We now raise our voices to him, offering our needs and petitions to God our Father. For all who teach the gospel message, especially all who join for the teach to pay to our children, we pray to the Lord, Lord that our country offer hospitality and welcome and the privilege. We pray to the Lord, Lord that the people of the world respect life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. that all our school community enjoy their summer vacation and be rested and refreshed for the new academic year in August, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For the repose of the souls of Innocentia Silver, whom we remember in a special way at this novena, at this mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for the intentions written in our book of prayer and for all the intentions we hold in the, sister, in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Provident and generous Father, you know our needs before we know them ourselves. Look with favor on the prayers we offer and hear and answer, answer them through Christ. Amen. Amen. One breath, one body. One body, one body. 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 One
Pray, dear friends, that this your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal goodness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished a marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, in the highest, Hosanna, in the highest, in the highest, in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, 
James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until we come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this spotless victim, this holy victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and to all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, to those sinners, (laughs) open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. 
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And 
strength for today. Just as you are, hear the Spirit call. Come just as you are. Come receive, Come receive Christ the King. Christ the King. Come, and Come and live forever. As you are, come just as you are, come and see, come and see, come receive, come, receive. come, and, live. come and live forever. Strength for today takes the living water and never thirst again. Come just as you want, hear the spirit. Come just as you are. Come receive, Come receive Christ, the King. Christ the King. Come and live, Come and live forever. Life everlasting and strength. Just as you are, hear the Spirit call. Come just as you are. Come receive, come receive Christ the King. Come and live, come and live forever. Receive Christ the King, come and live forever. Drink the 
this cup of the covenant You will live forever For I will raise you all I am the bread of life Does love revealed? I am broken that you might be healed. No one who comes to me shall hunger again. No one who believes shall ever thirst. shall come to me, and I shall give them rest. I am the bread of life, all who eat this bread will never die. God's love revealed I am broken That you might be Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, the all-school reunion for the celebration of the centennial of 100 years of St. Dominic School is this coming third, or Saturday, August 3rd. And all alumni, parents are invited to come, and tickets are on sale today after Mass on a table just outside here. And they can also sell you tickets to the gala on November 7th, which will be a, a very wonderful dinner gala. And we'll have the celebration next Saturday beginning with Mass at the Vigil Mass Saturday evening. From there we go to the school and we'll have a nice tour. And on the way into the gate, you can pick up a wonderful, nice glass of wine. Very civilized, huh? 
And then from the school, we'll come over and have a wonderful dinner in the parish hall this coming Saturday, August 3rd. Tickets available all this week at the parish office, the school office, and at the door. We have a number of these newsletters that come from the province, the Western Dominican province. And this is the second edition of this year. And if you got one in the mail, you can look in the back if you haven't already. If you haven't received one in the mail, then you can take one home. And, and the back couple pages is a pictorial story of the ordination of four of our brothers to the priesthood this past May, one of which preached the homily today, Father Andrew Thomas Kang. And he wrote a wonderful, beautiful spiritual reflection on his experience being ordained to the priesthood, and it's in here. So please take one home if you don't have one, and if you haven't opened up the cover yet, the one you got in the mail, please do that uh, to see the information of what's happening in our province. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Verse 3, like it says in the board of 739, verse 3. Blessed are they who through their lifetimes saw the seeds of peace. All will call them children of the Lord. Blessed are you, the persecuted in your holy life. For in heaven great is your reward. Today. 